Ever wondered about the story behind the assassination of President William McKinley? It's a tale that takes us back to the early 20th century, a time of great change and unrest. The man at the heart of this story is Leon Czolgosz, an American of Polish descent, who would go down in history as one of the few to have assassinated a US president. McKinley, the 25th president, was shot twice at point-blank range by Czolgosz. But the bullets didn't kill him instantly. Instead, he fought for his life for eight long days before succumbing to his wounds. The event sent shockwaves across the nation, leaving the public horrified and bewildered. How did it come to this? What drove Cholgosh to commit such a heinous act? To fully understand this shocking event, we need to delve into the life of Leon Cholgosh. Born into a Polish-American family in Detroit, Leon Cholgosh had a rather unremarkable childhood. His life took a turn for the tragic at the tender age of 10 when his mother passed away. As a teenager, Cholgosz found work in a glass factory and later, a steel mill. But the economic crash of 1893 upended his world. Workers went on strike and Cholgosz found himself drawn to a socialist club, a gateway to more radical socialist political groups. This was his introduction to anarchism. His life was marked by periods of intense isolation. After witnessing multiple strikes in 1898 ending in violence, Cholgosz chose to retreat from the chaos. He moved to Ohio to live with his father on a sprawling 50-acre farm. But even there, he found little peace. Clashing with his stepmother, he shied away from helping with the farm and was noted to have minimal social interactions, be it friendships or romantic relationships. He was, in essence, a recluse. Yet, this isolation did not quench his thirst for knowledge or his interest in political ideologies. A speech by the prominent anarchist Emma Goldman sparked his curiosity. He attended her lecture and dove headfirst into anarchist literature. He even met with other anarchists, but his presence was not always welcomed. A radical newspaper once issued a warning about him, branding him as a potential spy. Despite his isolation, Jolgos held strong beliefs about the injustices in society. He saw a world where the rich exploited the poor, where the government was to blame. He looked to the assassination of the King of Italy, Umberto I, by an anarchist as an act of defiance against these injustices. This act of violence from a man who claimed to be helping the common man resonated with Jolgos. It pushed him further into dissidence, radicalizing him to the point where he too was willing to take drastic measures. On August 31st, 1901, Jolgos ventured to Buffalo, New York, a decision that would change American history. The city was alive with excitement for the Pan American Exposition, a World's Fair celebrating the achievements of the Western Hemisphere. Among the attendees was President William McKinley, who was scheduled to give a speech. In the midst of this festivity, Cholgos, a man deeply radicalized by anarchist ideologies, had a sinister plan. He rented a room nearby, biding his time, waiting for the right moment. His weapon of choice was a concealed Ivor Johnson safety automatic revolver, which he had purchased just four days earlier. On September 6th, Cholgos made his way into the exposition, his revolver hidden, but his intentions deadly. He approached President McKinley and fired twice at point-blank range. McKinley, a skilled military man and the president of a rapidly growing nation, was now fighting for his life. The shooting of President McKinley sent shockwaves through the nation. The beloved leader, shot twice at point-blank range, clung to life for eight agonizing days before succumbing to his wounds. His death plunged the country into mourning. Newspapers splashed the grim news across their front pages, while homes and public buildings draped in black bunting bore silent testament to the nation's grief. Meanwhile, the assassin, Leon Cholgosh, was swiftly brought to justice. His trial was a brief affair, lasting barely two days. The jury took just an hour to find him guilty. His sentence, death. On October 29th, a mere seven weeks after the assassination, Cholgos met his end in the electric chair. The assassination of President McKinley marked a dark chapter in American history, one that continues to intrigue and horrify us to this day.